What is Wu Wei? Wu Wei has different layers of meaning. It is only two characters, but many people have misconception on this term. So with our sharing today, you will have a better understanding on this term, Wu Wei. Before I talk about Wu Wei, I want to give you a history. Why Lao Tzu used the term Wu Wei? What kind of situation was he in? Answer is that during his lifetime, as we know, he was a librarian and uh, he's in charge of the librarian or on the National Museum of the Chu Dynasty. But during that time, it was the most chaotic time of the wars. Very important person that I want to introduce to you, who is King Wen of Zhou. King Wen of Zhou, he is one of the author in Yi Jing. So in Yi Jing, there are total four author. The first one is Fu Xi. Second one is King Wen of Zhou. The third one is his son, Duke Chu. And the fourth one is Confucius. So King Wen of Zhou, he is the second author of Yi Jing. And as you know, Yi Jing, it's a very, uh, it's a very difficult Chinese classic to study. And the Yi Jing book, it's very profound. One of his son is King Wu. So he, King Wu helped his father establish the, the Zhou dynasty. And you can imagine King Wu's father is King Wen. Although King Wen, he was not a king. By the time his son established the Zhou dynasty, he was already old. He couldn't handle it anymore. So because the people want to um, continue to admire him, therefore they give him the title of king, but he, was, he never became a king and he passed. So King Wu became the, the, the first emperor of the Zhou dynasty. And King Wu, he is a very benevolent king. I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say king, I should say emperor, I'm sorry. So Emperor Wu is a very benevolent one. During the time he took the he took the position, he want to help everybody to prosper, and he want to thank everybody who established the Zhou Dynasty. Therefore, um, he divided the uh, Zhou territory into seventy one division. So this map that you see here, together they were all belong to the Zhou dynasty. But Emperor Wu, he want to say thanks to everybody who established the Zhou dynasty. Therefore, he gave 40 divisions to the Zhou's family, and then others to the neighboring tribe. And then the Shang dynasty too. Uh, there were some survivor from the Shang dynasty. And uh, Emperor Wu, he was very generous. He said, okay, well, I'm going to give you this piece of land. So everybody get a piece of land. Some are bigger, some are smaller. The Zhou's family, they get the bigger one. And uh, these two category, they get a smaller one. So you see there is, there are some division that's bigger and some are smaller. So you can imagine what's happening here. Um, in the beginning, during the first generation, everybody was um, living together in harmony because um, the Shang dynasty was uh, defeated and uh, there is the rise of Zhou dynasty. So everybody was living in harmony among the neighboring state. But as generation goes on, they want to proclaim their territory and they want to attack the other neighboring division. And therefore they claim themselves to claim their own territory and they want to claim their own dynasty. I want you to imagine in United States, we have 50 states in United States. If 50 states, each one of them want to claim their own nation, what's going to happen? And not only that, some of this um, piece of land are so small, it's equivalent to the city here. 
the city compared to the county compared to the state. All these are not, some of them are equivalent to the size of state in United States, but some are just equivalent to the city in the United States. So some are really, really small. And there are total 71 divisions. So everybody eventually want to fight among each other. So when they want to fight, there is always a leader. And in order to make the territory stronger to form their own dynasty, he wants to recruit a, a soldier by force and he wants to have heavy tax. Therefore, what happened to the people? People start to suffer, right? That's why Lao Tzu advocate Wu Wei during this time. He does not like military reform. He does not like uh, consolidation with other, other um, neighboring tribe or other neighboring dynasty. He thinks that it's supposed to take place naturally, but it's not the case back then. That's why we, if we think about Wu Wei, we need to know the background of Lao Tzu's um, situation. So this is the situation that he was in. During the time it was Emperor Wu, he divided the land into 71 pieces. And then it was in the later Zhou dynasty. Um, it was being divided into two periods. One is the spring and autumn period. The other one is the warrior state. And you can see from the name warrior state, that means people are fighting among each other. And here I want to point out to you Lao Tzu and Confucius, they were born in this time, 770 BC to 476 BC. So it's this time. They did not exist in the warrior state, but they exist in the period before that. So, so if you look at the, the story of Confucius, you will see that Confucius traveled to different dynasties. So this is what happened. Uh, this is what they went through during that time. So when you talk about Wu Wei, we can look at Wu Wei in two ways. First one, let's look at it here. Wu, it means uh, negative, no, not, or nothing. So this one, there's no confusion on this. And this one way, it's action and do. So if you look at this interpretation, that means in action or not doing anything, following its natural course. This concept, it coincides with Lao Tzu's philosophy. It's an application not to control, impose laws and rules, armed forces and troops into the government regulation and do not put too much regulation onto the people because when you have too much regulation onto the people, they will have much suffering. And, and Lao Tzu advocate that a good government is to follow everything in Tao, to follow everything um, in its natural course, in its natural order. Now to look at Wu Wei with the other definition is Wu, it's being this, it has the same meaning as the first one. The second one, Wei is the homophone as this word here, Wei. So this Wei here means to disobey, to violate or to go against. Therefore, when you look at this definition, it means not doing against the nature. So that means not doing against the nature of heaven. The nature of heaven has its Tao. The nature of earth has its Tao. The nature of human has its Tao. So if you look at this definition, it means do not do anything against the nature, which include the heaven, the earth, and the human. Now I want to show you the picture of the oracle of this world way. And this image here, you can see that there is a hen uh, holding a stick and th there is an elephant holding a stick. So this word is describing a person is working on something, working with intention, working with um, some kind of plan. I mean, he's working, he's using this elephant for farming. And then you say, wait a minute, farming? Didn't Chinese use the cow for farming? 
Um, I think in the old time, Chinese used cow and elephant. And we can see that in uh, Emperor Sun's time, which is uh, 2257 BC, he used the elephant. I mean, he did not use, but we can see from the story, the elephant and all the animal come to help him to do the farming. So back then, the Chinese used elephant for farming. Using elephant to farm, it's a difficult task because you have to communicate with elephant, you have to nurture the elephant, you have to love the elephant, otherwise the elephant will not listen to you. So this word, it means to work to work or to work hard to, to give, to, to do something to sustain one's life. Another oracle that I want to show you is Wei. This word Wei, it means, oh, by the way, it's the same sound, it's homophone with this one. So this one, it's called Wei. This one, it's also Wei. Yeah, so in uh, ancient time, if they are in the same song, people can use the word interchangeably as a homophone. So when you when you use this word way, it means to disobey. And let's take this this character as two parts. Let's look at this picture here. Do you see there's a square right here? So this square here, it represents like a city block. So within the city block, there is uh, people living there, many household, and then there is some, some kind of wall going around. So this means uh, people residing together in the community. Yeah, in a community, doesn't matter whether it's a small community or a big community. And this two part here, the symbol above the square and the symbol below the square, it represents the feet. And you can see the feet, it's going different way. It's going different way. They are not working together. It's like uh, against each other. This is what this, this uh, character means. And now let's look at this one, um, the one on the left. This one, it means walk or journey. So this um, character here mean, meaning there is uh, the footprint and there's a different footstep. Um, here forms a journey that like people walk together. So together, when you combine this character and this character together, it means to disobey. So when you have Wu Wei, and if you use this word Wei here, that means uh, because you are combining with the word here, Wu, it's not to disobey. So in chapter 25, we can see that Lao Tzu emphasized very much um, the responsibility of human. Here, I list up the nature of heaven, nature of earth, and nature of human. If we look at the nature of human, it's very hard to, to think about what is nature of human, but we can think about nature of human if we extend beyond the human. And if we can look at how the sun operate, how the moon operate, how the, the ocean tides rise and fall every day. And we can see in the nature of earth, it's very benevolent and with so much compassion. Uh, whatever trash we put on earth, the earth will just absorb it because human comes from heaven and earth, come from the universe. So the nature of humans is supposed to follow the, the Tao of heaven and earth. In chapter 25, Lao Tzu talk about the significant role of how human play in heaven and earth. So here I highlighted in red, the Tao is great, heaven is great, earth is great, and man is also great. And down below, man need to follow the earth, earth follow the heaven, and heaven follow the Tao, and Tao follow the nature. And in Zhongyong, this is um, Confucius annotation. He also mentioned about human. There is a difference between human and animal. Here we can see 
let's look in the blue text here. It is only he that's us who is possess the most complete sincerity. So this sincerity is the virtue that every human has. It's our inborn nature. We're supposed to carry our virtue and we're supposed to manifest it. It's part of our Tao. So if we can carry this uh, complete sincerity and manifest it, and we can give our full development to our own nature, and next one, being able to give his full development to the nature of other men, then he will be able to give the full development to the nature of creatures. So here, the nature of creature, here talks about the animal, other sentient being, not including human. So human does have the potential to, to influence the force of creation of the universe. And let's look in the last one. If human can give full development of the nature of creature, then he can influence the force of creation and transform and nourish the power of heaven and earth. So what is the nature of human? The nature of human, we need to follow heaven and earth, not just being so narrow-minded about um, following our own nature. So there's a difference on that. And in I Ching, it also display what kind of role that human play. In I Ching, there is a 64 hexagram. But regardless which hexagram you look at, there's always uh, six lines, whether it's broken line or unbroken line. So in the first two, it's it's the representation of heaven. The middle two is the representation of human. And the bottom two is the representation of earth. Therefore, you see human plays a very important role. So when we look at Wu Wei, a lot of people have misconception about Wu Wei is doing nothing or inaction, that they only get half right. So it's doing nothing of human nature. We have a lot of bad nature, the arrogance, greed, being judgmental. We have, um, we tend to judge people, right? We tend to be discriminated on other people and them being biased, having prejudice, prejudice. So we should do nothing of that and do nothing of that by force, but we need to do something and that something is Tao. So when people talk about, oh, Wu Wei is doing nothing, they only get half right. It's doing nothing of the part that's nothing has to do with Tao. But the other part is the Tao that we still need to manifest, that we still need to carry on. So Wu Wei, it's, it's also listed in chapter 12. For our eyes, our ears, our mouth we can use we can use a way that we can manifest a style but we can also use our sensation to blind our eyes to deafen our ears we can choose our eyes to see something that we are not supposed to see or we can use our eyes to see the ancient scripture enlighten our wisdom so it just depends on how we exercise our our vision, our hearing, and our mind. So in chapter 37, Lao Tzu talks about Wu Wei. Tao is everlasting. Tao is Wu Wei. Then there's nothing undone. So we can dissect this verse into two sections. The first one is the cause. The second one is the effect. So for here, we can look at Wu Wei as a three interpretation. The first one, as what most people say, one does nothing. But here I grade it out because this is the part that most people missed it. Even though one does nothing, but one still need to put some effort, right? Second one, one does nothing as the na nature will still take its course. Number three is this Wu Wei here is to not to disobey. One does, but not against 
nature. So if we look at chapter two and chapter seven, now we look at these two chapters, we understand why all the sentence sages, they do a lot of things, but they don't want to stay in the front. They don't want any recognition. They don't want reputation. They want to place themselves last, place themselves extraneously. It's because all this thing, it's against the Tao. It's against the heaven and earth. Heaven and earth never want to have any credit, never want to position themselves in it. What activity are Wu Wei? So these are all the activities. The first three is to help us to reach our inner nature. So this one, this three I consider Wu Wei. Working to sustain life. Nowadays, people have to go to work nine to five and some people work at home, which is fine. So to sustain life, this is Wu Wei. Hiking, swimming, going out in the nature is Wu Wei because it helps you to balance your body, mind, and soul. But fishing and hunting is not Wu Wei because it hurts other sentient beings. We are having our right to live, but the fish and the animal in the park, in the forest, they also have the right to sustain their life too. So anything that hurts other sentient beings, it's not Wu Wei. Listening to peaceful music, it is. Activities related to mind and body practice on good deed and virtue. So Wu Wei activity is following the Tao, not just the Tao of human, but also heaven and earth. Now come to the, the one on the right. What activity are not Wu Wei? Being lazy. I'll give you an example. Say, uh, oh, I don't want to work because I'm just practicing my Wu Wei. My, my nature say I, I, I want to rest. But being, that's not Wu Wei. Wu Wei is that you're supposed to go to work to make your money, not being a couch potato. <laughs> uh, so that's also the same apply to number two. Waiting other to feed oneself. If you are just waiting for your mom and dad to give you enough, <laughs> the money to spend, uh, to give you the food on the table, and you wait for other people to feed you, it's definitely not Wu Wei. So a lot of people have a misconception about Wu Wei being so negative, so passive, so individualized, so isolated, but this is not Wu Wei. They just have it wrong. So this one, it described the most um, misconception of Wu Wei and emotion overexpress. For example, you can have uh, anger over express. It's okay to exercise our emotion. We have seven emotions, pleasure, anger, sorrow, joy, love, hate, and desire. When you express emotion adequately, it's okay. But when you over express, then that's mm -hmm. not Wu Wei. And same thing for our desire too. Our eyes have desire. Our eyes, our ears, nose, tongue, and body and mind, we have desire, but we only exercise our desire moderately. And then uh, work overload. We shouldn't work too much, like overload, overload. <laughs> Not having time for, for us and our inner self because um, between movement and non-movement, and I'm talking about the yin and yang circle. Um, the white part represents the moving part. So when you do the moving part um, for eight or nine or 10 hours, there will be time you have to come back to your stillness, which is the black part. So if you have too much of the, the, the active part and without the quiet time, without the tranquility, then it's not good. It's not the Wu Wei. And I want to mention that uh, YouTube and Facebook, Facebook that nowadays everybody do, which is okay. Uh, there's a lot of things that teach in YouTube and Facebook. Um, I consider that as Wu Wei because uh, even the topic that I talk about today, I went online to look at it. Is there anything on what I'm going to talk about. I need some information, right? You will be surprised. <laughs> There's no information on this. It's very limited. So I start to 
I start to realize that um, not many people have understanding on this this uh, subject. So it's important to talk about this. And uh, oh, I want to say that after you watch the YouTube and the Facebook, we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't overdo it, and we should not have attachment. I want to give you an example. <laughs> my husband, <laughs> my husband, like to watch Korean soap opera, <laughs> and then in the Korean soap opera, there's the there's always a woman who are oh no, the girl who are very beautiful, and the hair is like very shining. Um, they condition their hair very nice. So every once in a while, my husband will say, hey, Joanna, how come your hair is like this? It's very freezy, so dry. Um, you should maintain your hair. And I say, you must have watched so much Korean opera. And he started to laugh. <laughs> so when you start to <laughs> when you start to take the opera or the movie into the reality, that's like you are carrying the attachment over your life and you are influence other people. So it's not good. And even um, sometime he will say that, oh my God, whatever uh, on the YouTube, they cook such a good dish. And then he expect me to cook a good dish for him too. So uh, that's like, uh, <laughs> I want to say it's over expectation. Uh, I cannot do it same like the, the one that they do on advertising because some YouTuber, they do use that to make some money. So that will be considered um, not way if you attach to whatever you watch on YouTube, on Facebook, or even on movie. So on this, on this category is everything that is done disobeying the Tao, heaven, earth, and human. And uh, last week I was uh, asked a question, is prayer considered Wu Wei? It depends on it's for who and what. So from this diagram, you can see, it depends on the intention. Who is the prayer for? Is it for self? If it's for self, then there is this too. So let me talk about selfless first. So it's if it's for other people and we are wishing other people for liberation, then that's Wu Wei. And if it's for self, if you are asking the prayer for having more wisdom um, to, guide, to guide people, to liberate people from suffering, to have good health so that you can continue guiding others. And if you want to have a prayer on a successful holy mission, that's Wu Wei. And if you want to have a basic need for fear, say right now I'm, I'm employed and I need to have a a roof over my head. I need to have food on the table. That's Wu Wei too, because uh, that's your natural need. But uh, all this eventually for liberation of others. And when you, you come over here, there's two arrows. Once the mission is done, I, will you be attached to the result? And it, so I highlighted in red. That means this one is not Wu Wei. If the result is non-attachment, then it is Wu Wei. 